Hey guys, so I wanted to share with you how I prep my student portfolios. I do have a video of how I make the, or what I put in the student portfolios and how I use them, but uh, this is just kind of the beginning process of it. So these, this deck here is from last school year. So these are my sophomores from last year that are now juniors. This is one class period, at first, second, third period sophomores. So this is one stack, first period, and I will combine them with my other students. I will sit down with the junior teacher that will have them next, and we go over them, answer any questions she might have, and um, tell her, for example, okay, this particular student was the secretary for my skills you say my uh, sophomore year, uh, this past year. So she would be maybe a good candidate to help train someone. If she's not already running again, she can help you uh, guide whoever will step up to the plate. Um, different things like that. Maybe there might be um, students that have participated in certain events that led a particular event and I can say, hey, we had Polar Express Night here. We collaborated with the Junior Academy. We had our table booth, and this particular this particular student, she was the leader on that table. So, whenever you, um, if you participate in that event, and whenever you need someone to help you, she could maybe help you in taking the lead since she's already done it and has experience. She can help that event goes smoother for you. If she doesn't participate, she can at least help you in the prep of what needs to be done because she was already there. So it's a great way for me to communicate with the following teacher that's going to get this bunch. So that way she has a good idea of what students have already participated in what events and who um, has done Skills USA, who went to competition, who at uh, district level, who participated in state, who placed, who, et cetera, things like that. So that is what I do with the junior teacher, Miss Martinez, whenever um, school starts up again, that probably in two weeks when teachers come back, we'll take a couple hours and go through these. Um, and then she fills it up with, she'll give them the, her, her teacher classroom information, contracts, whatever to sign or whatever she has available for her students. Uh, letters, notes, parent notes, etc., and she'll keep that on file. Any TDLR information, sheer stuff, she can put it there. And then from here, um, that will then go on to the senior teacher, and she can put, you know, whatever she needs to, and the, the uh, process repeats. One good thing that I do have is um, I put the student pictures on the front of the of the folder, and then I have an extra picture in here, and typically I have an extra permit. So besides our TDLR books, that way if she ever needs to grab it for whatever quick information, she has access to that quickly and doesn't have to run over to the books. She has it in her, um, locked up in her file, file cabinet in her desk, her office. So that is uh, really great. And all I do is I just take a big clip like this one and I just clip them and keep them together. And anytime I need to stick something in there, then I put it in. Um, I didn't do this before, and since I started doing it, it really, really helps me keep organized. Um, if you do keep uh, student important student information, make sure to lock it up. It is student information, so you need to uh, have that secure and, and respect that information uh, of each student. So do have those locked up. Um, all right, so that's the pile. And so the way I start is I just get a big box um, of the file folders, or the, yeah, file folders. Um, I did pull up a roster of my class for this coming year. It's already up in Skyward. Last year our district moved to Skyward, so I do have that. And um, I compared it to my class my roster that I had made and this is kind of and I'll share that there I'm covering the student names but um I made this little um spreadsheet I guess you can say and 
I it's my checklist and I used to just write on paper and have sticky notes here and there and then I would lose it and it was all crummy looking and you know a parent would come and pay something or she would pick up a kid and I was like okay where's my paper and I'd run around trying to find it and uh, it's like this I had other notes on these papers and it just was not professional and it was not good and it was not well organized and I would toss things and like the kits would be on one page and payments would be on another and skills would be on another and then at the end of the day I was like well, who paid what or who already turned in their supplies or I was always lost with things and so I organized myself a little better I've edited and added and deleted um, as the years have gone by um, this is the third year I've done this and last year first year I kind of sort of did it this last year I did it pretty good and this year yeah totally doing it um, and so I'll read a few things that I have on here and then I color coded it this year I had extra time over the summer while I was um, doing this but I put the student's name in alphabetical order now I did write it in um, I didn't type it in as opposed to you, you could if that's you um, I just didn't have that available at the time that I was doing this but what I do what I did add on here were a few things but I do want to say one thing if you're like me and you're very OCD um, with things being perfect with especially with your class roster and like first period second period third period who what students are where like get over it okay I used to be the teacher that I wanted to know who I had in my class and I wanted to know their names and I wanted to know who was in what period because I wanted to put name tags on the tables and I wanted my file folders perfect you know how they do like the three different you know the side the middle and the bottom and I would do it I would spend all this time and then then some students would drop or we would add some students or like first period students would move and got a schedule change and they moved to the afternoon or to second period and then my stuff was all messed up and I had scribbles and scratches and that it still drives me insane it really does <laughs> but I'm working on it but you really have to just get over that because you're spending energy and time on something that really doesn't matter I keep telling myself that I know it still bothers me but you know I just, I just want to make it look nice, right? I just want it to be in order and I don't have to be, I don't want to keep going to the bottom of the list to find somebody. And so what I've learned over the years and I've learned the hard way is that students are always going to be changing at the beginning of the school year and give it a month. Counselors have the whole school to fix and so sometimes it's a little late transfer. You're three, four weeks in, almost the end of the six weeks, and you get a student that changes, and you're like, oh, my roster, everything. i got to redo everything. It's okay. Just, you know, be patient with yourself and just be patient with that process. Um, and then at the second semester, the beginning of the second semester, there will be students, some of them, that may schedule change, transfer, move, etc. along with, you know, you always have those transfers in between the year that just kind of randomly sometimes pop up. So... Um, don't be too fixated on that being perfect because it will change. You, you do get students moving around. So I always just leave some spaces at the bottom. So like down here, I leave some spaces down here so that way I can just write it in. And then um, once we're like maybe second, six weeks, I'll retype it or reprint it, make the adjustments, and you're done. Um, something like this where if I've already come in, taken the time and colored all the squares, I'm not going to... I'm not gonna, it's fine. Just block it out with a black sharpie if the student's gone or put them at the bottom of the list. Just make a little star alphabetically where the student should be and you'll be fine. I know it's frustrating, but that's just how it is. So I'll read you some of the things that I have on this list. Um, if the, and every time the student does it, I go ahead and color it in or check it off. Um, I just did color to be fun this year, but it just can be a check mark. Um, there, if they've already paid their lab fee, we do have a $25 lab fee, um, that helps pay for whatever supplies that we may need in the classroom or the lab. If they've paid their $16 skills USA membership fee, um, if they've turned in their skills registration form, I go ahead and get that to be in school year. That way I just, I have it. And it's something less that I have to do. Everybody's signing forms at the beginning of the school year anyway, so might as well just throw it in the pile. Uh, their liability form for skills. 
there and once I register them, like when they turn those in, if I have them in their little pile and I have each student's um, information in the little pile with all their papers that they've turned in already, these are incoming ninth graders. So they were eighth grade summer. They were still eighth graders when they turned this stuff in and then they're gonna be ninth graders at the beginning. So I like to get everything done over the summer before school's over so that way August 1st, Y'all know, ain't nobody got time to be doing all this paperwork when you're trying to teach and, and then do, you, there's just no time. So if you can just put a little time into doing this beforehand. So much better, so much better. So once I go through their pile and they turn things in, I check them off. And then once I pull out the report, because all the payments are done online here on our campus, I pull the report and on the report, it tells me who's paid what. And so then I go ahead and check them off. Um, if they've made a partial payment, then I write down on square $25, meaning they've only paid that much. Once they do the whole payment, then I'll color it in or make a note. Um, another one is register into Skills USA. Once I, once Skills District 8, because we're with 8, registration is open, I'll go ahead and take that registration form they've already turned in, put all the information in, register them, and then after I do that, I check their box off on this page saying that they are registered already. So it's all on one page. Um, and if I want to register them, but I don't have their info, it's because they didn't turn it in at the beginning. And it's a good way for me to say, okay, it's the second week of school. Okay, such and such and such and such. You guys, I still don't have your papers. Do you need another copy? Go online and make a copy. Print it out at home if you don't, or I can print you one myself, or find it and turn it in. Usually they dig out from the bottom of their backpack and it's all crumpled. I will take it. I, I just need the information. So um, another one is the pay the freshman kit. This obviously is freshman. Um, once they received the entire kit, I will also have them, them initial or me initial it. They're sometimes back orders, but I tried to order the kits over the summer. I placed the order like the first week of June, so they'll come in the summer. So then that way, if there's any back orders, they'll come before school starts in August. So much better. This whole put your order in September, get it in October, November, what are you teaching? You know, like it's so difficult. So if you can, just get it done ahead of time and makes your life so much easier. And it's better for the students because they can start learning faster. You know, you don't have to sit there and wait for things. Um, they've turned in their TDLR gift card. Uh, we make the T25 red TDLR registration. They turn in their gift card to make that payment. Um, uh, what else is on here? Just skip through a few. Um, once I register them onto TDLR, I initial or color that in. Once they receive their permit, they initial this, uh, and it's just accountability. Um, once I put their permit, their picture, I, I check it on here if I don't have their picture. Um, once I put their picture on their permit and their permit in the TDLR binder for the inspector, I check it off. Um, if they've turned in their school supplies, I don't hound them for school supplies. It's just whoever brings whatever, just bring it. And we're gonna put it in a bucket and everybody's gonna share. All my classes share and if I have a homeroom, they share too. I'm not gonna, ha it's not, if they had a job and they had a car and they could go buy their supplies on their own, they would, but ninth and 10th graders rely on their parents and sometimes it's difficult. Okay, so my classroom, um, actually the entire building is kind of like a sensor thing. So if the light, if you don't move, the lights shut off and the light's not too bad. So I'm not gonna get up and do the whole wave my hands around like a chicken so the sensor can turn the light on. I'm just gonna keep going. So sorry for the lighting, but so I don't hound them for school supplies. If, you know, they rely on their parents and it's not, I'm not gonna make the kid feel bad if they're, they, you know, it's not their fault. So whoever brings whatever and we'll just use what we got and once we run out, we run out. And if I can, I'll go buy some stuff and if not, then we make it work with what we have. <clears throat> um, and so turn an emergency account sheet when I, where I keep up with how much money they make in the salon. Um, 
And also to, what else do we have here? The uh, t-shirt size, because if we ever order t-shirts, field trip uh, permission slips, um, if they've signed up for Remind. If you guys do not use the Remind messaging system, it's awesome. Check, Google it, check it out, YouTube it. It's really, really, it's a good system. The way for you to um, message the students and the parents, you message out they in a mass or individually and when they reply they only reply to you only you can see it and they don't have your personal information if that's what you choose or if that's something your district requires of you um but i send out a message in class and then i go around okay show me that you received the message and if you received it then i go ahead and check it off and if not then they need to sign up because if they are not signed up then they're not getting the remind reminders from me Tomorrow we have a test, tomorrow wear your uniform, tomorrow we have salon day. Hey, by the way, you have your client canceled or hey, you have three clients tomorrow, don't forget to come, etc. So it's a great way to uh, contact with students and with parents um, as well. And then um, just a few other things, if they've already purchased their scrubs or purchased their skills USA, uh, skills USA attire, those are some things that I have on here. And um, each year I just kind of expand the list or delete things that kind of were irrelevant from um, experience from the year before. So um, I am, like I said, very OCD. So all of these that have um, not been colored, I want to color the whole, <laughs> the whole strip, the whole column. So I do what I can to make sure I uh, complete my sheet. This is kind of like my, the student worksheet, but that's the teacher worksheet to make sure it gets done. Uh, and it's good accountability. And then I have these three things. It's three pages for my, my freshmen. I have this year 36 students. And so it just lives in one place. I have it with me all the time and I can, I do good with it. Um, when we do field trips and stuff, I do this the same, but individually per field trip, you know, did, did you pay your fee, your bus fee, your ticket fee? Did you get your student, are you passing? Um, do you have parent permission? Things of the sort. So these are awesome. All right, so um, then because they're alphabetic order and I'll give them to Miss Martinez next year in alphabetical order, I will go, or no, actually, well, it depends. Sometimes I give it to her like, okay, these students were in the same class together um, or just, you know, just so she knows, okay, who's going to pick sitting next to who so she kind of knows how to break up the groups and stuff, stuff during uh, instruction. Um, but I'll go ahead and take my folders and then I will do the one, two, three thing. And I just keep in mind that... Um, if a student, I'll put them in alphabetic order, but if there's a student that drops or a student that comes in, my OCD, I just have to push it aside and know that I might have to add a different folder into it. I know, that's bad. But um, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put the, uh, print the student names on, um, I did, well I can't show you because student name, but I printed the logo of the CTHS logo on a, a little tab, sticker. I forget, label, and then I uh, put them on here, and uh, I've, already, I've printed their picture, so I'm going to take the picture, I'm going to stick their picture in here, put the extra picture in there, uh, in the folder, and then go ahead and do the registration. They have their TDLR sheet, the form that they filled out that I got off TDLR. Always make sure to look on the bottom, always make sure that it's the most current registration form, okay? They've already filled this out and turned it in before school was over and um, then they brought me their $25 gift card and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and submit their information into the TDLR into Shears. I'm going to register them. I'm going to print their receipt. I'm going to so they know where the $25 went. I'm going to print a white and black copy of um, their permit and then I'm going to print a nice copy of their permit. So this paper here, this parchment paper, okay. So this here is, let's see, it's 24, the weight, uh, the color is copper, the weight is 24 pounds, and you get 500 sheets. I mean, it's just like, you know, nice paper. It's a little thick, a little bit, and um, it's a nice color. This is what 
before when I was first, you know, getting going, um, TDLR, or I guess it was the Cosmetology Commission, um, but they had nice paper and they had a gold seal. Um, I don't, and I can't remember, it's not, it's in the office. I don't know if it has a seal on it now. I think it's just black, but it was nice paper. It looked like a legitimate, a lot, you know, nice. So now, you know, they just get it on black and it's just like computer paper. And so they're like, they, the students maybe don't pay, they don't, maybe don't value it as much because it's just a, it's a copy of something. It's just a regular computer paper, nothing fancy. So I printed on this nice paper. So then they're like, ooh, yeah, here's my license. I'm going to frame it, you know, so it adds value to it because it is valuable. It's worth, it's, it has value for the four years that they're going to be here in the program. And so I print it on nice paper. It's a lot of like, okay, open the printer, print, put one in, print it, and, but it's totally worth it. So then they get the nice copy. Um, and so once I print that, I put all of that stuff in their folder. And then when they see me, they're going to come see me the second, third, I think the second or third, I can't remember, of August. And then they're going to come and we're going to find their folder and all their papers that they've already turned in are going to be in here with all their syllabus agreements and all of that good stuff, medical information, all that. And then their permit and receipts are going to be in here. So they get their receipt, they get their fancy paper permit. Okay. And I do have a gold seal. Uh, so I'll stick that on there as well. Um, or what was it? No, that I tried something, but it didn't work. I tried to do like a gold seal, a TDLR, but it, it was too much work. It didn't work. Um, that was last year. But so, what else was it? So they pick that up and I keep the folder. And then that way I have it when I find out who's in first period, second period, etc. I will go ahead and um, order that and have that in my bundle locked up. So that way I can have that information available whenever I need it. I will also, actually I print three permit sheets, one on the fancy paper, one for their record, just black and white, and another black and white one that gets their picture that I also have printed, and that goes in our TDLR binder for the inspector and for our sheets to get placed behind that. So that is how I create my student portfolios. I've done this now, I guess this is my fourth, year like actually maybe like no yeah it's my fourth year like really 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 doing it and doing it right um and i would highly recommend just for your organizational mental <laughs> health um to have everything in one place and to not be too crazy about the small details and students coming in and out and ruining your roster order um and reprinting and such but just to have something that you can work with now it doesn't this doesn't work for everybody okay so some some schools you you are the junior you are the 9th 10th 11th and senior teacher like it's you so it's just, you don't have to pass this on to anybody. It's just you. So, and I think, I don't know if I mentioned why, but when I put the student picture on here, because Miss Martinez, she's seen the students and she's, she recognizes them, but she maybe doesn't know all of them. I know I wouldn't. I mean, I'd like, yeah, I've seen you here before, but I don't know who you, I don't know who you are. I don't know your name. I don't, you know, so having their picture on here for someone that's getting the bunch next is definitely a good idea because like, oh, okay, well, if this is um, Montserrat and this is what she looks like, oh, okay, yeah, Montserrat. Well, uh, Ms. Ramirez told me that Montserrat was her treasurer and she's good with money. Okay, well, who, let me see, she's in my first period. Oh, okay, she sits in the back. Okay, so she can help me organize the Christmas um food drive or the uh, spa night with uh, for Mother's Day or whatever, you know, things of the sort. Order the t-shirts for the club or anything like that. But if you're the only teacher, then you don't need the picture there. You know, it's only like if 
if you have a long-term sub coming in or something like that but you you just adjust if you like the system you just adjust it to what works for you and your class and your students and if um you need a binder instead of manila folders because you're putting four years worth of stuff in one then go for it do a thing of binders and you only have seven students or 15 students that's good um, we have we average about 165 students a year so 165 binders would be a lot but 165 folders not too bad and then at the end of the senior year the teacher will take um, the senior teacher will take the file folder uh, and everything that's already been passed down through the years um, take all of the hour sheets so when she drops them she'll drop that into this folder and this folder with all the documentation of that student being here in our program under our license will then get filed away and I cannot remember if it's five or seven years I can't remember but we do have to store that that documentation and then shred it after those years have passed so then it's something that she doesn't have to do later it's already done for her she just easily she just has to keep up with it another thing too is great is when i tell like i was looking earlier some of the students that are not coming back that have not are not on my my role from last year uh some transfers within the school or maybe they moved out of state or something or out of the out of the city um we have to drop those students so their their folders already done We'll put their, their previous hour sheets in here. We'll put their TDLR drop report, uh, the shares report in here, and then we will file that away. If the student ever comes back, we pull the folder, all of our information is in here. So it's really beneficial to have a student folder. Again, make sure it stays locked up. Make sure all uh, you protect the student uh, information because if it were your information, you would want it to be protected as well. Um, and so that's what I have for you guys. That's what uh, we're working on today and uh, it does take time. It does take time, but once you get it going, uh, it definitely is worth uh, having it. So thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked the video or if it helped you in any way, gave you any ideas, give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for the next video to come. Y'all have a great school year. Bye.